this is a buyer's guide for one of those long lasting, been around forever, slightly weird turntable accessories, the record clamp and the record stabiliser and anything really that you put onto your turntable spindle. Now I'm going to go through a range of different types of clamps and stabilisers and other oddities but before we get to that point, before we get to that point let's address the elephant and it's a pretty large elephant in the room when anybody talks about well record clamps at least but also stabilisers and turntable weights and all that jazz. And the subject in hand is using a record clamp or turntable weight to temporarily, at least during play, temporarily remove warps from a vinyl record. The theory says that you put a turntable weight or a clamp over the spindle and the weight or the force of the clamping action at least helps to flatten or removes some of the warp from your dodgy vinyl. And to me, using a clamp or a stabiliser or a weight to try and remove warping on your vinyl record is a very silly thing indeed. Why? Why is it silly? Well, put it this way, I would tackle the problem from the other direction. I wouldn't have, and I do not have, warped records in my collection. You look through my collection, which is what? For, well, probably nearer 5,000 LPs as we speak, there is not one, and I mean one, warped vinyl record in the entire collection. Now why is that? Well, if ever I buy myself a brand new vinyl record, whether it's from mail order or whether it's from a record shop or whatever, if I see that the record is warped, it goes straight back. Why should I accept a substandard product? I bought a vinyl album and part of that contract is that the vinyl album or single or 10 inch or EP is flat. If I buy a vinyl album, it goes back. I either send it back or I take it back to the record shop and I say, give me another one. Now, that's if this thing is being bought via mail order and I can't see it first, or maybe in a record shop, it might've been sealed. But if it happens at a record shop, if I take it back, I say to the guy behind the counter, fine, okay, you give me a swap, I want a replacement or my money back, but let's say I want a replacement. You remove the shrink wrap and you show me that this replacement record is in fact flat because I don't want my time wasted yet again. So you do it, you show me, you convince me that this record is actually flat. And if it is, everything's great, I'm happy, I shake the guy's hand, I say farewell and I go on my way. That's new records. now. Second-hand records, well, that's a completely different thing. Again, if you're buying, say, from Discogs and you get yourself a warped record, you send it back. You don't accept it. You don't make do. And if you go to a record fair or a junk shop or a charity shop or you go to a thrift store in the States or you go to anywhere else where you can actually pick up the vinyl album or single or whatever it is, you must take out the record and examine it. This is your responsibility. You shouldn't be taking home warped records. There is no excuse, zero excuse. Would you buy sight seen when you buy a car, for example? Do you walk into a car showroom and say, hmm, that's pretty, here's 25,000 pounds, buy? No, I would never do that. You should never do that. Give you one example. The last car we bought was second hand and it was pricey. We saw the car at a very good price, lots of money off, and we thought, okay, this is a chance to buy a fairly expensive car, very cheaply indeed. So we grabbed the salesman and we said, we'd like a test drive. This car looked gorgeous, by the way. It was absolutely a stunner. I mean, it was catwalk material, okay? We grabbed the car, he was in the back, we were in the front, we did a test drive, we were on the road, we we're just gonna head down to the roundabout, do a U10, come back, back to his place. So we were just about to overtake a car. My wife was driving, this was an automatic, and she put her foot down to accelerate, and nothing happened. It didn't accelerate. Her foot hit the metal. Nothing happened. It trundled along very nicely in cruise mode, as it were, doing 30, 40 mile an hour, whatever it was, I can't remember, but it didn't accelerate. It was broken, nothing happened. So we took it back and we said, thank you, but no thank you. You should be like this with records. If you go 
to a record fair and you pick up your copy of Sgt Pepper from the Beatles, you do not say, this is a very nice looking cover, here's the money, goodbye. No, you take the record out of the sleeve. You examine the record, you see if it's warped. If it's warped, you put it back. In fact, you warn the guy behind the counter because he should know too. And then you pick something else or you walk away. Do you see what I'm getting at? You shouldn't even have warped records in your collection to want to use a clamp in the first place. The only time, the only time you should have warped records in your collection and be doing something about it is either you either deal in very high priced records, I'm talking, you know, £500 plus, £1,000 plus, and you either deal on a regular basis, not as a one-off, as a, on a regular basis, or you're a hardcore collector and you're looking for super rarities where, you know, there might be one or two copies around. And if you grab a warped copy, then my goodness, you're going to hang on to it. And then you get yourself a Furatech DF2 record flattener. It costs about £2,000. It does the job properly. None of this faffing around. None of this, oh, it reduces warping by 15%. So that must be a good thing. Hey, no, just don't do it. Use the proper tools for the job. That's what I always say when I give advice. Use the right tools for the job. Don't use clamps to get rid of warped records. Get rid of warped records. That's the solution. Don't have warped records in your collection. Unless it's high priced, unless it's super rare, there is no excuse to have them in the first place. So why have clamps at all? Why have stabilizers at all? Why have record weights, as they're sometimes called, at all? They're there to improve sound quality. That's the only reason they exist, to improve sound quality. That's why you buy them. Now, record clamps will actually clamp on to a spindle. And what that does, it basically is as one, not only with the spindle, but the bearing underneath and the top of the platter. The theory being that it will reduce micro wobbles, basically. It's possible, at least, that the bearing in your particular turntable table might not have been made to the finest of tolerances or production standards. So there may be some tiny, tiny, and it only has to be micro vibrations that will affect sound quality. So a record clamp can kind of put a stop to that. It sort of grabs everything and stabilizes it, as it were. So that's really what a record clamp is doing. A stabilizer, sometimes called a turntable weight, goes in another direction to do a very similar thing. Basically a stabilizer, which is what I will call it now because that's what it is, damps. It's a damping tool. That's basically what it's doing. It doesn't grab onto the spindle. It's not really there to engage the bearing, although there might be some secondary beneficial effects to the bearing from the damping effect. What the damping is actually doing is damping vibrations in the actual record itself and also the platter beneath. There are lots of vibrations occurring all over the place in that area and around the spindle area. And it's possible that your turntable may actually benefit from a measure of damping. And that's what the stabilizer does. Now, there are one or two oddities, some strange variations on the two general subjects that I've mentioned. And I'll let you see a couple of examples just to show you what I'm getting at. But for now, before we go any further, Let's do a closer look at a range of record clamps and stabilizers. Oh, they're still here. Okay, well, that's okay, because these things are small and I can bring them to camera and I can talk about them here. We don't have to go anywhere else. Okay, so let's go through my little list. What I want to say before I introduce you to the clamps and stabilizers is this. All of these items I recommend. I have them all here as reference products and I have no problem at all using them in my job as a hi-fi reviewer. You'll notice they come in different shapes and sizes, made from different materials, arrive at different price points, but they all perform well and they all do the job. Is there a best of the bunch? Yes. Yes, there is a best of the bunch, and I'll probably leave that one to the very end. So stick around for that one. 
So let's get to the list. And the first one is this. Now, let me bring this to camera and you can have a better look. Okay, well, that's not working. So what I'm gonna do, so the camera can focus on the clamp and not my mug, I'm gonna put my hand in front of my face, which I'm sure many of you will applaud. Here we go. Hopefully you can see that. I'll just shine that. This, my friends, is a bona fide record clamp. Let's see if I can bring it closer. I don't know if that's, I hope that's still in focus. This is a record clamp from the UK audiophile hi-fi outfit, Michelle. Now this clamp is a bit special because it's related to the first ever clamp. Michelle actually made and invented the record clamp. I ain't kidding. Michelle, or in fact engineer and inventor John Michelle, was the first person to invent the record clamp and by association the entire industry of clamps and stabilizers and record weights and all the other esoterica that you might find out there. It all began with this. Well, not this particular one or this particular design. I actually saw the original clamp when I went to visit the company itself. And they told me that when John Michel actually invented the clamp, he tried to have his idea patented and they wouldn't accept his idea. They said, the patent office, they said it wasn't unique and interesting enough. Can you believe that? There's an entire industry based on these things. But the patent office said, no, 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 it's not good enough. So uh, you can't have it. Imagine how much cash the company would have now if they had a patent for the original clamp. Again, I'll bring as a camera. I'll get out of the way and I'll just push this towards the camera. So I'll be over there. So you can see the top here screws off. You can see the thread there. And basically, as that screws tight, this little grommet here squeezes the spindle. Now, the issue with some ten tables is that certain spindles are wider and narrower than others. So with some spindles, a gentle tightening might be sufficient. For others, you might have to go right to the end and give an extra tug on the screw thread there to affix this clamp to the spindle. It depends on the turntable, of course. But uh, this one, it costs around £40. A classic clamp, the daddy of them all, and it works. It actually does reduce the noise floor. I like it very much indeed. If you're going to go for a clamp, there ain't nothing like the classic original, and this is the classic original. Now this is quite a complex clamp and again it is a clamp. This is, well I don't really know how much this costs. I don't know, two, three, four, five hundred pounds possibly. I'm not sure because you don't buy this separately. You buy this with the turntable. In fact this is part of the turntable. I'll go further than that. The turntable won't perform properly unless this is on the top of the spindle. Your records won't sit on the platter until you've fitted this clamp to the turntable and then everything flattens out. This actually does push down on your turntable and if there is one clamp that I know of that does help reduce warping it's this thing and it's in two parts. It's an intriguingly built clamp and it works very well. This one is from an Avid Acutus, and the Avid Acutus is very expensive indeed. How much is it now? £15,000 with an SME 4? Something like that. Anyway, a lot of cash. And this, as I say, is a critical part of the entire turntable. Without this, the turntable is not going to work. That's how important this is. As I say, it's in two parts. I'll bring it to camera and I'll try and show you. Again, I'll get out of the way so you can better see and focus on the clamp itself. Now, as you can see, it's very nicely finished, all shiny and chromey. As you can see, this part is slightly risen from this outer area here. And it's this part, obviously, that will have initial contact with the area around the spindle on the Avid Acutus. So what you do, you put your clamp over the spindle, then you take hold of this top reel and you twist. And what happens is the spindle 
on the Avidacutus has a screw thread. It's not smooth, it is a screw thread. This top wheel actually affixes this entire clamp onto the screw thread. Once you've screwed this clamp onto the screw thread, then you take the second wheel. When you twist this second wheel, you can see that rotates independently of the top wheel. You will see this part retract. And when that retracts, as so, this part clamps onto the vinyl and puts pressure on the vinyl. So you can see it's not sticking up at all there. Let's just reverse that and you will see the central silvery part emerge. You can see there. And let's do it again. And down it goes. So basically that then will be clamped not only to your vinyl, but the vinyl will be clamped to the surface of the Avidacutus platter. And because the Avidacutus turn table has been designed from the ground up to use this thing, this thing works very well indeed. Because it's not a third party object, because it's part of the inherent structure, the inherent design of the turntable, that's why this works so well as a clamp. Third in the list is this. It's from Sound Deck. It costs around £90. It's made of solid steel and it's quite weighty. This is a stabiliser that actually derives from its pairing company called SDS. SDS is a heavy industry company actually. They produce sound damping and noise reduction for major industries like underground railways for example and the like. So SDS are more of a heavy industry company. Sound Deck, which produced the stabiliser, is a sort of hi-fi spin-off of SDS. In sound terms, this damps excessive vibration, lowering the noise floor, adding discipline and control to frequencies across your sound stage. Now in construction terms, the damping puck, that's the name of this 90 pound accessory, comes in two parts, well in terms of its construction. The main part is the bit that features the handle. At the base is a thick piece of stainless steel as a disc and in between that I'm pretty sure from memory anyway there is a damping polymer which does a lot of the noise reduction. The actual weight of this stabilizer will reduce vibration and in terms of sound quality I found on the turntables I tested anyway, it brought some discipline to frequencies which were a little bit wayward, normally caused by excessive vibrations. Again, let me bring this to camera and you can have a little look yourself. And you can see the layer in between the two pieces and there is the top with the logo imprinted upon it. Next up is this Japanese stabilizer from a company called, and I can never pronounce this properly, Oyadi. I think it's Oyadi. It's priced at around £220. It's quite a flexible design this because you'll see as I bring this to the camera that it consists of two discs and in the sandwich the meat are little columns of metal which can be removed or later added again to alter the weight of this stabiliser. The stabiliser itself is called an STB. So this is the Oyadi STB, a little bit battered. It's been with me for many years now, much used. And you can see the columns here. Now the stabiliser can be reduced in weight and I'll go into the reasons why in a second. But for now I will show you how it works. Basically you twist the top off here and you can see that comes away leaving individual weights. Let me put this other bit down. There we go. The individual weights can then be removed. So and then you can alter and play around with the right weight for your own individual turntable. The top screws onto the central pillar here. Let me do that now. Reach down for the top here and that oh, screws quickly on, giving it a little tighten there and it's back to normal again. And you've got the hole for your spindle here, slightly recessed at the bottom here to give it a snug fit. So why should there be different weights of stabilizers? And why is it possible that the Oyadi STB can vary 
its actual weight. Well, it depends on the turn table, of course, but the more weight you place on your turn table spindle and platter, the more damping you give. It's possible to offer too much damping. If you do, you will kill the dynamics. It's a bit like damping your listening room. I don't know if you've ever done that. When you damp your room, you're getting rid of all those harsh echoes and the like, and you're providing a little bit of sonic balance to enable your hi-fi to perform at its peak. It's the same with a stabilizer. You're actually damping some of the vibrations when you place a stabilizer over a spindle to let it rest on the platter. But you don't want to get rid of all the vibrations because a lot of the music and the reverb lives in those same vibrations. Too many and the music is out of control and it sounds harsh and it doesn't sound very good at all. It can sound a bit edgy and bright. If you damp too much, the resultant sound can be a bit dull, a bit lifeless. So you don't want to go too far. As I say, it depends on the turntable. Each turntable works in a slightly different way. So you'll find that there will be some turntables where no stabilizer or clamp is necessary or warranted and it will actually harm sound quality if you add a stabilizer or a clamp to the spindle. In those particular cases you shouldn't add a stabilizer or a clamp at all. There are some turntables where a very heavy stabilizer will do a world of good. There are others where maybe a little bit of weight is all that's required. You need to test. You need to give your turntable a bit of a sound test. There is no silver bullet when it comes to clamps and stabilizers. There is no single solution. It depends on the turntable. So for example, I use an Origin Live Sovereign turntable, high-end turntable, and I think it's the Mark III. I did some tests with the Mark III, and I did use a stabilizer for the Mark III. I think it's the Mark III. Later on, I've upgraded the Sovereign to Mark IV, which has involved upgrading certain parts of the turntable. Doesn't need a stabilizer or a clamp. It doesn't need it now. So even iterations within the same design, upgrades within the same design, can change the need for a stabilizer. You've got to keep on the ball with this. You've got to keep yourself up to date in terms of upgrades and tweaks. So if you do change your turntable, if you upgrade your turntable, listen again, listen with fresh ears. See, does this turntable still need my clamp that I have or my stabilizer, which I've been using for years? Now I've done this turntable upgrade. It might not need this anymore. You need to be flexible. Okay, two stabilizers in one. They're a little bit different from the norm though. These are the stabilizers in question. They're both from an American company called HRS and there is weight in both of these. The silver stabilizer is the heavier of the two. That's called an ADH, H for heavy, and this is an ADL, L for light. But the difference with both of these designs is what's underneath. There is a noise damping material fixed underneath both stabilizers. Now the material used is a fascinating thing in and of itself because the guys who developed this material were connected for many years with the military. They used noise damping materials and techniques for helicopter rotor blades. They also used damping materials for missile destroyers. Then they left and came to see us in the hi-fi world. Very nice of them too. And that's what this material basically comes from. All the work they did at the military. And it works. And it's very nice indeed. And this was the stabilizer, this particular one, the black one, that I used to use on my Origin Live Sovereign. I don't need it anymore, but on the Mark III version that I had, it performed excellently. Now we're going up in price with these. The ADL, the lighter of the two, is priced at around £265. The heavier, and I think the top part of the chassis on this one, the ADH, is made out of steel. It feels like it anyway, but this is 495. So this is the ADH, the heavier of the two, and you can see the damping material. It's a sort of a polymer, rubbery sort of feel to this particular substance. And here is the lighter stabilizer of the two, the ADL. And I mentioned Origin Live in relation to the last stabilizer, 
and Origin Live, strangely enough, has produced the next item. It's this. It's the Gravity One. And this one is intriguing because it's not a clamp and it's not a stabiliser. To me, this is actually unique. To me, there's nothing quite like this on the market. Well, at least at this price point, and the price point is £195. But this little gizmo has been inspired, at the very least, by a piece of Japanese exotica called the Shun Mook. And the Shun Mook retails, last time I looked, for £3,750. A pretty penny, I'm sure you'll agree, which makes the £190 or the £195 for this Gravity One a bit of a bargain. It basically walks along the same path, though, does this. And it's all about noise reduction. There is no weight in this. I think it's 70 grams. There is literally, well, there is hardly any weight in the Gravity One. So it'll put no pressure at all on your bearing. There are 10 table manufacturers out there. Riga is one that springs to mind where they will say for particular turn tables, do not put a stabilizer on our turn table. The bearing doesn't like it. You will get that on not all, but some turn tables. Well, one or two I've heard anyway. So Riga, I think RP8 possibly, could be wrong. Maybe that's one of them. RP6 possibly. I think the RP8 is definitely one where they do not encourage you to put anything heavy like a stabilizer on the spindle. But this would be okay because there isn't hardly any weight on this thing. It's also a bit wobbly. Now I'm gonna my microphone is here. I'm gonna put this by the microphone and give it a shake. I don't know if you can hear it. You can see that it's not a robust construction. Well it is. That's robust. There's a hard plastic here. Underneath we've got some light wood included and we've got some damping material here as well. This is what sits over your spindle. It doesn't hug the spindle, it just fits over the spindle. And this stuff going on here, stuff that Origin Live don't want to talk about, and I can understand the reasoning behind that, but it's all happening on inside here, folks. You will also see my fingers moving a little bit. That's because the construction is basically three discs one, two, and three. Again, I bring this to camera, you can have a look for yourself. But there's a bit of movement there. And again, this is all to do with noise reduction, lowering the noise floor. It works brilliantly. It's the best pseudo stabilizer clamp that I know. It actually performs incredibly well. And for me, this is the market leader right now in terms of price performance. So you can see the Gravity One name at the top, and we've got the company name below. And as you can see, there are three tiers, three discs which are held together, but fairly loosely. You can see my fingers are only mo not moving across the surface, they're moving with the construction here. Underneath you can see this light wood. This is a damping material. It's a strange concoction. It looks similar to the material used on the Origin Live mat. It might be the same, it might be a variation. It looks a little bit more, well, it looks stiffer and harder than the material used in the mat, so it might be a development from that. But basically it goes over your spindle and it reduces noise and it does it incredibly well. £195. Now that might be just asking too much for certain turntables and the Michelle clamp, for example, might be the better option. But if you have a mid-range or high-end turntable, I'd certainly recommend this one as a choice. And that's it, I'm done, blimey. Well, this particular video is supposed to be just a quick overview. I thought, you know, eight, nine minutes and we'll be finished, but um, a bit longer than that, I think. So I'm glad I didn't get into heavyweight reviews for each and every product here. But like I say, if you've got any questions, give me a shout and I'll do my very best to help. I will put some contact links below in the description if you want to know more, if you want to investigate more. All of these products are still available for sale, so if you want to do a quick Google, you will find them on there. Again, if you have trouble locating them, give me a shout. And that's it, folks. Just to repeat, all of these products I recommend, they're all at different price points. They're all for use with different turntables. 
If you can, I would do a home demo. If possible, talk to your hi-fi dealer, ask for a home demo. If you have a friendly dealer who will do this for you, try and grab, say, three items, a clamp and a couple of stabilizers, bring them in, test them on your ten table, keep one and give the other two back. If you can do that, I would recommend a home demo, though, on a ten table. At the very least, I would recommend a dealer demo, but I wouldn't really buy blind, as I say, because your tent table might not need a stabilizer or clamp, or it might need a slightly heavier stabilizer than the one you've just bought, for example. So a demo is really recommended, I would say. I hope this video was of some use for you going forward. Bye bye for now.